Start up. So we're gathered here tonight to talk about our new City Council Chambers project. I'm Paul Kunz of the Facilities Division Manager for the City of Plano. So we're going to talk, what are we going to talk about while we're here? We're going to go over how we got here. We're going to choose the project team that will be involved in the day-to-day, -day, starting through design and to the very end of it. We're going to address what we hope to accomplish with this project. We're going to show you some preliminary concepts. And lastly, we're going to go over a timeline of the project. So I want to start with a little history of the project and even the ADA. Um, this, the ADA was enacted after this building was built. Back before that, handicapped accessibility was really more best practice that was left up to the design professionals. The Department of Justice requires that all municipalities comply with the ADA for all infrastructure and may, must have what we call a transition plan, which identifies any infractions we may have and our plan to rectify those. The city of Plano is currently carrying our transition plan and works it regularly, whether it's in a building, a sidewalk, cross ramp, an assisted listening device. We're constantly updating and improving. We completed an inspection process and found that we have to improve some areas in this building. And in a slide or two, I'll get into those specific areas. Um, we have also identified that we have issues in our lighting, our broadcast equipment, and other AV components. And so people understand some of these components that are you being used for this broadcast right now have existed since 1989 when we built this. And I think everybody understands how fast technology improves. The design of this room as we stand causes many issues acoustically with different issues for where you might sit, whether you're in council, whether you're presenting, whether it's the broadcast. They all have their own individual issues that are caused by the you know different reverberations. Um, so in 2021, after we've identified the issues we thought we had to fix in this particular facility, we put it out to the um, constituents of the city of Plano as a bond election for $5.5 million. And it was approved at a 60.6 .6 rate. So now I'd like to introduce the project team. Of course, I introduce myself as Paul Kunz of the facilities division manager. I've got Lloyd Collins, who is going to be the city's project manager to manage the day to day. I've got Andrea Park, who is our compliance manager. Greg Reed from Brinkley Sergeant Wigington Architects, who's the project manager, the architect for the project. Not in attendance is Joey Huskinson, who is our project manager for Wrights and Johnson, Haddon and Williams. And they are our AV broadcast and acoustical engineer. Also in attendance from the city of Plano, I've got Greg Russian, deputy city manager, Sam Greif, incoming deputy city manager, Jack Carr, deputy city manager, Shelly <laughs> Seamer, sorry, um, Deputy City Manager, and Shauna Haley, Director of Community Outreach and Marketing. So we're going to go start off and go through the areas we want, the main focus areas. We have three main focus areas for this project that we hope to fix or hope to improve. First of all, the American Disabilities Act compliance. We'll focus on the areas identified in our investigations. These are code compliance items. Codes are just the bare minimum. We would like to do better if at all possible. We strongly encourage folks to submit ideas from this town hall meeting and an online survey. 
We have a live streaming broadcast going now. We're watching it. We're going to be taking down questions, and we'll try to answer as many as we can tonight. But any ideas, we'd love to hear. Acoustical audio, visual, and lighting. We've struggled with the quality of audio and lighting to produce quality broadcasts and in-person experiences. This project hopes to improve these systems to current industry standards. We want to be able to have anyone that's interested in participating in a council meeting, a P&Z meeting, a town hall meeting, to be included, however that's possible. So we really want to hear everybody's voice. We, we hope to add, moving forward, better lighting for the visually impaired, closed captioning for the assisted listening, um, assisted listening devices for folks that want to come in and use them, and to rectify all architectural barriers to, the, um, to accessibility, um, accessibility to the chambers. And lastly, security. It's a cold, hard fact that we don't live in the same world we lived in 30 years ago, and we have to take some measures to improve security for this facility. Now, I want to get into our ADA improvements, what we know of and what we already plan to fix. It's been identified that the ramp up from the basement here has one slope that is too steep. We plan to fix that and smooth out some area, rough areas in there. Um, the ramp up to the dais that starts here, goes around back, and ends over here. While we've made it compliant, it's not optimum. It gives one spot for somebody that may need it to sit there. We like to have people have inclusion for everything. We identified some door trim in the, the top glass doors. That's already been fixed. We have our wheelchair spots and companion seating when we, were, when we were, um, did our research, found out we're non-compliant. Those have already been addressed. Um, we are going to, in the project, improve some aisle seats to have lifting armrests to help make all guests comfortable sitting there. And of course, of course we're going to be putting in assisted listening devices to meet current technology and closed captioning to improve current technology. Some other items like the views, better lighting, they're not required by code but we want to improve them to make sure we, include, we achieve inclusion for all. Our audio visual, one of the biggest things we want to achieve is a new video digital, or digital video wall so that the council audience has a clear view and we would hope that we can include closed captioning right on that screen. We're gonna have a new dais system including new cabling, new screens, new microphones, new controls, and new uh, vote, uh, vote tally controls. We're gonna have a complete new back of house master control system. Again, many of those components are original from 1989. We're gonna update the presentation system, make it more user friendly, and better to see what they're presenting. So that's one of our challenges now, especially in our P&Z meetings. I've already touched on it. I've assisted listening, we're definitely going to improve that. Lighting needs to be updated. There's many echoes and acoustical distortions in this room. Our, we're looking to improve a lot of that with acoustical treatment and adjusting architectural finishes and shapes. When Greg Reed from Brinkley Sargent steps up, he'll show you some of the things we're proposing. Um, there's many issues with the sounds being transmitted from the areas above the gallery and up over the second floor hallway. We want to address all of those so that when folks are up there talking and congregating, they're not interfering with the meeting down here. And lastly, for ADA, this podium I'm standing in front of, um, it's close to code, but we want to improve it and make sure that it is just the best thing for everybody to use and the most comfortable. Security, again, cold hard fact. We don't live in the world we lived 30 years ago. Um, we have to make improvements. We have consulted outside agencies, and we've identified different threat types and measures to be taken to minimize those. We'd like to limit positions for, that an active shooter could use. 
we'd like to change the seating layout up here on the dais that's such that no one has their back to the audience. We'd like to incorporate passive protection measures. And we also will incorporate crime prevention through environmental design principles. With that, we can get into the, some of the fun stuff, some of the stuff that's interesting to folks. Um, I'm going to hand off to Greg Reed from Brinkley Sargent Ar Architects, and he will go into some of the things we're doing on the floor plan and then show you some fun renderings. Thanks, Paul. Um, as you can see, this floor plan shows the, the council chamber as it exists now with the exception of the dais being reconfigured. This is one of the security measures that Paul talked about, trying to reconfigure the dais in such a way that there is no council member sitting with their back exposed to the audience. Uh, it also shows um, one of the ways we're hoping to address increasing the, the AV quality is instead of having the screen that you see behind me that size, we're going to bring that screen forward and make it much, much larger. Uh, so visual um, access to that screen will be much improved throughout the entire space. We're also going to, on the back uh, of this space where we have this, this low wall, you're familiar with the space, we're going to put glass up there and that's going to help address uh, some of the sound issues that Paul was talking about. So this is just an image of the, the council chambers that exist today and then a, a matching image of some of the things we're proposing. Now this is not a design by any means, this is purely uh, just some concepts for how we can address these issues. So one of the things Paul was talking about was um, the acoustic issues that we have in this space. And so part of that is driven by, one, the shape of the space, this round form behind uh, tends to focus things and cause echoes up uh, in the dais area. And then the high verticality of the space also causes echoes. So the way we're gonna address those is uh, one, just pull the, the height of the space down and, and create a lowered ceiling, which is gonna do a couple of things for us. One, it's going to improve that, that bounce time vertically. Um, and then we're also going to, again, reconfigure this this dais area, and we're going to soften all these uh, round forms behind us so that, and, and give them some shape that's not necessarily completely circular to help diffuse uh, what the, whatever sound we don't absorb with the, the softer materials we'll put back there. Uh, this is a view both from the back looking to the dais and then from the dais looking out. So you can see, again, how we're reconfiguring the dais, again, taking nobody's, nobody's back is to the uh, to the audience, and there will be ballistic treatment within the dais as well. Uh, and then on the, the right side, you can see looking out to the audience, you can see that we're adding glass to that back wall. You can also see that as the ceiling comes down, it completely blocks off um, any access to visually or acoustically to the uh, gallery up above, and thereby also blocks all the sound coming from the lobby that, that could come over that existing walkway. And then the, at the addition of the glass along the back is intended to help, you know, people tend to gather in, during the council meetings, they gather in this area behind, um, between the lobby and the back of the chamber. And sometimes a lot of noise gets generated there. So the, the idea is that glass will help um, knock that uh, amount of disturbing sound coming in. And then just a final thing, looking at the, the dais as well. Um, again, it's very simple, very clean, not a design in any way, just showing concepts. And that's it. Okay. So project timeline. We are really taking our time with this design, trying to get as many thoughts and opinions as possible, make sure we address every issue we can identify. For that reason, we think we're going to take till about the summer of 2022 to complete the design. With that completed design, we would hope to start construction in the fall of 2022. And we hope to finish construction in the spring of 2023. And one thing I want to make people understand, I think everybody's aware of supply chain issues throughout the nation. 
one of our goals for this project is to make sure that when we displace council, displace PNZ and whoever else uses this, this for their meetings, that we've done so using our best judgment and we have the project ready to go to start, progress through consistently and finish. So there's going to be a process where we have gone to construction and life is going to be going on normal here in council chambers. We know for a fact some of our AV components are going to take at least four months to get. So just so people see that, and if they're watching on our website, and we're going to be posting regularly on our website our, um, our project updates. We're going to be putting photos up every so often, um, some narratives, and to keep everybody informed. So when this project first kicks off, we may have informed you that, hey, design's done, and we may even show some of that. But then folks may say, well, it's been four months. Why is nothing going on? Because of those reasons that I want folks to understand. There's going to be a process where we have to get the materials, equipment, and everything we need to do the job. We're also going to hope to post a summary of thoughts and processes and questions that were brought up from the survey. That will be posted here as well. With that, I think we're to the end of our presentation and would like to entertain any questions we might have. Are there any questions? No. Okay. So, hello. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, my name is Dylan Rafferty, and as an active uh, disability uh, rights activist living in Plano, mm -hmm. this is a great presentation. I uh, kudos to everyone uh, involved. Thank you. Um, there are several comments and concerns that I have. Uh, first and foremost, um, when I see the glass behind the wall, um, you know, I, there's one entry point for those with physical disabilities. If they're coming out here, they're going to be parked over here. What about the people that want to just speak at the top of the building? I've seen other council chambers where people would want to provide a public comment at the top of the, at different points of entry. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to have representation um, at that level. That's, that's one of my mm -hmm. many questions. Can we address them one at a time? Yes. I'm, I'm better that way. My yes. memory doesn't work as well that way. So I get that, and that makes some sense. But we also have other things to consider. We are broadcasting that. How do we all of a sudden swing the cameras around and catch that person yelling from the top of the stairs? So we really have to bring that audience down to a point where we can capture them. Um, so I, it's duly noted, and we are looking at certain things we can do up top. But that, is, that would be a major issue with trying to make it that you know, somebody from up there can present. I understand the awkwardness, especially in a meeting you're called and you're up there, and it's kind of the awkward come down or through this way. But we do need the folks down here where we can capture them. I understand what you're sure. Um, Again, we're all about accessibility here. Absolutely. And so we only have one entry point for those with physical disabilities. Correct. So please understand that. I the second thing do. is when we have somebody here working on uh, uh, the control panel and the sound and stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, t we're taking away seats uh, in the room. So what are the... Um, if somebody's holding the control panels and stuff, how are we um, making sure that we're not trying to minimize any extra seats that are needed? Sure. We plan on the new system being much more streamlined, being hopefully being able to run most of it from the control room. And the folks that will be making our audio adjustments are going to be a lot more clandestine. I don't know if that's the right word in the public, but much more, less, less of a presence. They're going to be here so they can hear it with their ears, but they're not going to be in such a big, as we have now, where they take up that many seats. So the technology we're going to employ will fix that. One more question. Sure. Um, with the screen up here, and I know we have a, a great lady here that's uh, using sign language, um, and you're talking about presentation formats. Um, I've noticed here we're using Zoom uh, formats in a hybrid setting. 
-hmm. When we have presentations, we might have presentations, and then we might have at the option of closed captioning. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Uh, what are your vision of having multiple formats while having a hybrid version so people that are tuning in in various formats? What is your vision of having multiple formats while having someone who is signing and closed captioning and so forth? I love that's a word that you use, vision, because I would like to tell you what our vision is and what we hope to achieve. It's not a promise here tonight. What we will achieve is what we hope. It's our vision. We plan to have multiple, hope to have multiple, in addition to this large screen, adjacent screens. We are hoping to achieve that our system will allow us to have, excuse me, Shannon, if I get this wrong, I know what we're hoping for, hoping to have real-time captioning. So right now, one of the things you're seeing is the presentation is live but the broadcast where the captioning is added for the broadcast is actually delayed, and that's an FCC thing. We're hoping to achieve the technology that would allow that captioning to be real-time here in council chambers. Hoping, not guaranteeing, but hoping. And there'll be, hopefully, I have multiple displays, so anywhere you're sitting, you'll have the resolution that you need. You're welcome. John Stafford, uh, 1401 Harvest Glen. So Good evening. you're saying that where we've got the brick walls up here at the top of the amphitheater, we're mm -hmm. going to put glass on top, of, essentially put glass on top of where That's the brick walls the is? Current, yeah. Okay, yes. and then how is the entrance to, are we going to put doors there, or is that going to be an open space? How is, how is so the... So we have challenges. Now, there are a certain amount of, you want to take this one? This is your sure. ballywick. So the... The two side ones will remain open, and the glass will be held back a little bit to allow uh, areas for broadcast cameras, you know, news or whoever, to, to have someplace where they're not shooting through the glass. These back two central ones will create a vestibule with a door, because having that large an opening kind of defeats the purpose of the glass in the center. So we're trying to, that's where the people tend to congregate, so we're trying to limit sound infusion in that area as much as possible. It'll, it'll still filter around the sides to some, but it's going to knock down a, a great deal just by having that whole back section enclosed. So one of the issues that I've seen in other council chambers, like the Commissioner's Court, uh, Allen City Council, is when people open that door to enter, you have just the noise of the door itself, plus whatever noise is going on in the lobby outside. So how are we going to minimize the, so that the door itself does not cause a, dis, opening the door itself does not cause a disturbance? So one of the things is we're creating an actual vestibule for it. So it's not opening directly into the space. There's a, there's a room being built at each of these openings and those doors come into the sides. So it's not directly into the space. Hardware, so we have hinges that are quiet. We have sound seals so that they don't, you know, smack against the frame, it's all dead. Okay. And you said that you're going to try to put the sound guy off in the sound booth, or are we going to create something like where the Christmas tree is back here to, for the sound guy to... The, the goal is that they're driving the, the vast majority of it from the control room, a wholly separate space. H having somebody within the space so that they can hear, I and mean, that's Paul's thing, but yeah. um, um, I'll let you talk to that one. What I've heard in initial, so that's way beyond where we're at in design right now, but we have talked about ideas. And we think what we're envisioning is that sound person will be sitting in one seat, probably on a tablet, making adjustments, real-time adjustments to the sound. So not taking up a seat and having his table take up two more. So as we're, as we're building this, are we going to leave the wall intact or are we going to replace the wall with new material entirely? Currently, that back wall is staying, that back masonry wall is staying where it is. We don't see having to do anything to it otherwise. Okay. Do we know if we have any online questions? Um, 
what are besides the what you guys are developing in the design who are you are including in the process are you including any stakeholder groups uh, are you per, uh, including persons with disabilities i know you're having this open forums and everything but are you per, uh, including members of the community or persons with disabilities or organizations perhaps uh, that could participate in your dialogues in preparation designs that could help um, prepare beyond uh, what these surveys that you're doing? Sure. Um, we do have a handful of folks that will be part of this throughout the whole. We have, in the past, um, consulted the US Access Board. We talk to them regularly. Um, but we do have a handful, and there's a one employee in particular that represents both the accessibility community and the AV broadcast community. Um, so we do plan on consulting back to a handful of folks, yes, sir. We have no other questions. I think that is the... Oh, yeah, remind you of the survey. Survey's online. Um, you saw the web page, which I can go back to. Easier way, if you don't want to memorize that web page or write it down, Google City of Plano Facilities. That'll put you on the web page for my division. And off to the left, there's a link, or even simpler, renovate City of Plano Council Chambers Renovation Project, and you should sit, find that same link. Please take the survey. The survey will be open through January 31st. And once we close the survey, we will again try to put a summary of it. And we will try and incorporate that, and we'll re-engage re, um, re design. Right now, design's on hold. And we're going to take all that and try to move it forward. Thank you, folks. Have a great night. part in preventing fatal crashes. Most crashes and fatalities are preventable and caused by things such as speeding, drunk driving, and distracted driving. Here are some things you can do. Buckle up. Your seat belts are your